come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with by going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. And these are the internet radio superstars. Holly, Michaela, Sean, and I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Sean. Continuing what? his uh, <laughs> like series of animal murder mo- movies. <laughs> and the Ryan johnson averse. Yeah, I mean, and, it, it is. It's true. All right, Sean. Also, and, Sean, we, in what movie did we murder a cat tonight? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and also, uh, we kind of picked two Frankenstein movies back I know. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tonight we watched 2002's May. Okay, yeah. No, that answer, yeah. <laughs> directed, directed by. Directed I was by, like, wait, uh, what's the question? Directed <laughs> by. <laughs> uh, Lucky McKee. Who we would know Lucky from? Lucky McKee. That sounds like a bar. I mean, it really does. does. Yeah. It sounds yeah. like a, no. It sounds like a brand of jeans. Is what it sounds like. Oh, well, there's Lucky yeah. brand <laughs> jeans. That's right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Lucky McKee. It sounds like know. an Irish pub. Yeah. Right. It's Lucky does, McKee's yeah. pub. Yeah. Lucky McKee's. Yeah. Okay, so here's the question. Lucky McKee obviously mm-hmm. had this movie and kind of got a name for himself yeah. in the horror uh, fandom, mm-hmm. right? Because I remember the he woman. Was a... <laughs> he did the woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you see the woman? I did. I don't remember a damn thing about no, it. No. I don't I, think I've seen. I don't think I've seen that. Anything else besides this one? Because I'll give you, he started out with All Cheerleaders Die, which is a great way, a great name for a movie if you're going to start your career. Mm-hmm. Um, this is his second movie, technically, directing and written by. Um, he also did, in 2006, The Woods. He did a Masters of Horror. Oh, fuck, I saw The Woods. That was that one that That's got, one. like, delayed and delayed and delayed. It had okay. Bruce Campbell in it. Agnes okay. Bruckner. Oh, really? I remember yeah, stuff and, about it, but I remember not watching it. The, um, I remember... Shyamalan's movie, The Village, was called The Woods, and they were oh, both. Oh, is this the one they had the, to change it for? No, oh, okay. th- this one kept it. Shyamalan, right? Changed. He changed it, yeah, yeah. for The Woods. Oh, okay. And then it didn't come out for like a year after. Right. That. Okay. Okay. Uh, then he did a movie called Red. Uh, Blue like you. Wait, Red. Red. No, not that one. Okay. No, like two thousand. <laughs> not the Bruce Willis one. Right? Got it. Thank you. <laughs> starring Brian Cox and Tom Sizemore. Oh shit! I saw that was about the dog. Oh, somebody kills his dog, and oh my yeah, god, John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> damn that was actually a good movie okay oh, shit i totally forgot about it. okay so i have seen i always have to think lucky mckee mick g and like separate them in my head oh damn because really? uh, i can very easily get their filmography mixed <laughs> up i feel like uh then he did the woman then they remade all cheerleaders die in 2013 mm-hmm. okay that was more budget familiar. okay yep. right right um after that 2015 tales of halloween he, was, he did a segment in that yep. yeah and he was also was he a master of horror he did the one he with the um, one. yep Misty Monday and Angela Bettis. Yeah, because she's kind of in a lot of the stuff he does. Yeah. Uh, Blood Money, Kindred Spirits, and his last one in 2019, Death Simber. So he is still making movies. Yes. But mm-hmm. I guess movies. it feels like he's one of those guys who never actually uh, really capitalized he's on that. He's not the kind one guy really that they grabbed to put in a Star Wars movie. He's no. still making these <laughs> movies. <laughs> but even, I mean, like there was a fanfare. Okay, fanfare may like hit. Yes, may but hit. Yeah. Hit mm-hmm. on kind of an underground thing because right. it seems to me like in the 2000s you had that was kind of when uh film festivals became a thing cuz there was the internet and ain't it cool news. And ain't it cool news. I think we became a fam- became aware of film festivals yes. in the 2000s cuz yeah. they were going on in all the 90s and all that stuff and that's where a lot of the independent mm-hmm. stuff came from. Like, like, they became mainstream in yeah. the 2000s, yeah. yeah because everybody sure. sat there. I remember going like, "Damn it, there's all this buttonomathon stuff going on. And I don't <laughs> get to go." And right. then we did Anything get in one Austin. in Chicago, uh, the flashback weekend, mm-hmm. came here, and I remember, because I got the May poster, I think, at the first flashback Wow, uh, yeah, nice. that's... Yeah. Yeah, it's the, and you are correct, because it is their 20th flashback weekend mm-hmm. this yeah. year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 20 years wow. old is May this mm-hmm. year. Yeah, so there was a lot of write-up, I, I guess, on the internet, you know, there would be Bloody Disgusting or mm-hmm. Preacher Corner. Uh, mm-hmm. Joe Blow. Joe Blow, yeah, yeah. that was Dread the one Central. I was always on. <laughs> Joe, Joe Blow, Dread yeah. Central, yeah. yeah. Would write up stuff about these movies that they saw at these film festivals. And May was one of them. And so that's how I think like it got, you know, like a, a, a cachet around it. Yes. Um, also, just because of the people who worked on it, uh, still working today, obviously, uh, Ryan Johnson was one of the co-editors Not of this movie. the Ryan Johnson. The Ryan Johnson. He is friends with Lucky McKee. If you go back and watch Brick... 
there is a party oh, at Nora Zahedner's house. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Where there's uh, just a girl dragging a cooler by. And oh, my God. Uh, I yeah. love so that. So she's in okay, there. Okay, because I'm funny. sitting there through <laughs> through the movie, and I'm like, I remember a movie where like May, somebody dressed up as May walks through. And I'm like, I, I was like landing on it being trick-or-treat or something, oh. but yeah. that makes more I sense. I love that. Okay, yeah. so it was brilliant. That's pretty um, great. And also Steve Yedlin, who shot this movie, um, has shot a lot with Ryan Johnson. I think he shot... Almost everything with him started with Brick. Mm -hmm. I think he did Brothers Bloom. They may have missed a movie or TV series in there, mm -hmm. but he came back for Last Jedi and everything. Mm -hmm. I think he has Stevie Edlin shoot all his stuff. Okay. He's mm -hmm. also really, like, if you go on Twitter, um, he, it's like um, a school for cinematography. He's a very smart guy, so mm -hmm. check cool. that out. Mm -hmm. So wow. this is, um, it's from an era of, this is like, <clears throat> well, okay, to me, I always remember this era. You've got, like, the 90s hangover, right, of indie cinema yeah. mm -hmm. hangover. This movie especially, holy shit. Yeah. Because you, uh, you always have that little bleed we t always talk oh, yeah. about at the beginning and end of. So this uh, is 2002, <clears throat> so we're getting yeah. that bleed over from the 90s. But yeah. the 2003 was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, which mm -hmm. changed the the trajectory of the horror genre. Well, and they wasn't went, the first Saw movie 2003 yeah, as well? But, but, so. but that I actually saw, I kind of, uh, you know, this is my perspective. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you guys sit on this, but Saw is part of kind of that, like, you know, a resurgent horror of, mm -hmm. of 2003 mm -hmm. that I like. You know, I'm like, yeah. ooh, they were actually still doing stuff. Right. But Texas Chainsaw marked this kind of sub-variant of like, well... I know it's only been, you know, 20 years, but those aren't sacred movies anymore. We yeah. can right. reboot yeah, them right, right. and yeah. we can make a fucking shitload of money off of them. And then that just opened it's, up the yeah, gates. All to, downhill from there. Yeah. 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 Yep. And yep. here we are. And we're still doing <laughs> it. On the verge yeah. of Halloween. Years, years later. Here, here we are, people that just watched four legacy sequels over six months. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 I know. I'm then tired, I, guys. I, yeah. I kinda, I'm tired. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's why when I was watching this tonight, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember this era where there was still that kind of like hope and excitement. That was like yeah. the last time people I was trying excited things. Yeah. Yeah. about horror movies. Yeah. 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 All right. But as far as the decade seepage that we talk about of mm -hmm. that bleed over, this feels extreme, though, because I I would have swore this movie came out in 1997, not 2002. Yeah. yeah, this feels like it sat on the shelf for a couple years. Like yeah. the style, the music, the like the cinematography, like, it feels so yeah, much earlier. The whole time we're watching it, I'm like, wow, Jeremy Sisto grew out his hair really fast. Yeah. Oh no, it was several no. years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, like a good five years later. Yeah. yeah. Okay, when was was Ron Turn? Was that 03 or 05? I thought I, it was 04. Because that feels like, you know, that was like, we're going to do an original thing, but it's kind of inspired by the Texas Chainsaw right. Massacre, right. you know, kind of deal. But yeah. Because Sisto was also in... Uh, 2003, he was wrong. Too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's been in so many things. I just always associate him with Clueless. Mm -hmm. always. always the wrong turn guy for me, but it seems like there's something else major that I, I mean, he's law always order. like law and order shows. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, waitress. He's in Waitress. And he's a dick in that movie. Yeah, he's, like, he plays a good dick. Yeah. Like he can... What, do you not? Yeah, no, it's just the way you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Plays a real good dick. No, he does. He's, he's good at no, being an he's, asshole. No, he's very good at it, yeah. Mm -hmm. You remember when he played Jesus no. in the Bible? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Was this recently? Uh, yeah, it's no, it's in, they come out with a new The Bible <laughs> every, like, like five years. I don't know what years. those <laughs> filmmakers are up to. I don't know how recent this was. I'm sure I remember Kevin Sorbo's just, in it. Was this a miniseries? It, it might have been like CBS or something. It was, yeah, it was like a. Well, actually, I don't know because I remember seeing the video box for it, so I don't remember oh, if it was. Yeah, it, it was made for TV. <laughs> it's, like a, sure. it's like a big mini series, right? Yeah, probably. I feel like I shelved mm. that when I worked at I, Barnes and Noble. Like it was yeah, must yeah, have yeah. been a premium Can cable. Can we do a deep dive sometime of all of the people that have played Jesus? Yeah, mm. yeah. where's the documentary? Chris like, Sarandon. Call it yeah. like 32, 32 Christ Jesus? or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The day Christ okay. died. I remember I that mean, one from when I was a kid. There's some, <laughs> there's some choices Willem out Defoe. there. Yeah, I was well, like, Willem I know Defoe. Willem Defoe, yeah. Yeah. But he, <laughs> Willem Defoe at that time looked a little more like Jesus than most of the people did. But <laughs> um, right, Jesus so, was not beautiful. Okay, people. Yeah. Well, I, just want, like, I disagree. Put well, <laughs> that on a bumper sticker. Jesus, Jesus was not beautiful. Was not beautiful. <laughs> I disagree. Well, okay. I think he was probably How accurate beautiful. are those paintings? I'm just saying. Well, <laughs> Sean, if society is taught as anything, is that attractive people have an easier time in life. Oh, that's are, true. So he did have to deliver a lot of information to people. He had it to be charming and persuasive. Yeah, he was charismatic. Yeah. You guys. Very true. You guys. <laughs> are we looking at, at Sisto Jesus? <laughs> oh, that is, no, that is Dawson's Creek Jesus. That Look is at that Dawson's font. Creek Jesus. It's the Dawson's Creek font. It, it is. Jesus. Jesus. 
That's one. Oh, oh man, <laughs> that man okay. is gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Look at that, face. that Look hair, those flowing locks. Yeah. Oh, he looks I'm so oh jealous God. of that hair. Is it, it is... the Bible? What's it called? Jesus. 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 Yeah. I think he maybe then because he when may... you see the picture, you're just like Jesus. Jesus. He may have reprised the role in that miniseries. Oh wow! Of the Bible. <laughs> so he's double yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I was say, he's double playing. Jesus. He's playing Jesus in multiple cinematic universes. I think huh? so. Oh, yeah. Or they're all, right. all connected I mean, to the multiverse. Yeah. I can't think of a more culturally appropriate cast. Deborah Messing, Gary Oldman, <laughs> perfect, right wow. for the Middle East. Great, <laughs> yes. love it. Put an exclamation point on it. Put it on Broadway. Jesus. It's a fucking smash hit. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Man. That's right. wonderful. So McKee's other movie, <laughs> though, is uh, yeah. other like probably most well-known movie is The Woman, right? And yeah. there's a sequel to that, but I can't remember what it's called. It's not The Girl. I don't the Woman 2? There is a sequel to The I've the never woman. seen The Woman. I haven't either. I skipped over that. I read the I synopsis, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But okay, so back in 2002, so had, um, so who, I guess who's, who else is in this movie? Well, this is this movie. Uh, well, Jeremy Sisto, Anna Ferris is in this movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, did we ever look up when Scary Movie was? Oh, no, we didn't. That's the next one we got to look up. Anna Ferris. Yeah. I'm going to say, because my her, memory In her says, black hair days. Yeah, this was pre-Scary Movie, but we're Probably. about to find out. I'm going to guess. <clears throat> scary Movie. Because I think this. Scary Movie was 2000. Was oh, wow. it? Okay, so okay. she was a Scary Movie girl in this. And then. Yeah. Uh, well, scary Movie 3 came out in 2003. Wow, okay. we're already three wow. movies deep at this point. Jesus, quick. yeah. All right. Wow. Who else is in it? Uh, the guy from Borat. Uh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Who Anna Ferris. Anna, Anna Ferris. Or not Anna, Angela Anna Bettis. Ferris. Angela, Angela Bettis. Bettis. Angela yeah. Bettis. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Did yeah. we not? We, we glossed over that. Oh, yeah. 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 I apologize. So, well, okay. she's another one who I'm like, okay, whatever happened to her career? Like, where did she go? Because, um, you know, you have a movie that kind of She's a good actress. Through. I think so, very yeah. Very good. Yeah, yeah. And like we we established while watching, I was like, "Where do I know her from?" She's from Girl Interrupted, which mm-hmm. yes. everyone in that cast is spectacular. Yes. And she, right? She did a, amazing in that movie, Toolbox Murders. Yeah, yeah, yeah so she, was she was the, the lead in yeah. Toby Hooper's Toolbox. A couple murders. episodes uh, of Dexter here and there. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. TV version of Carrie. She was Carrie in that. Okay, which like so perfect casting. Which we've been talking about one. this a lot off mic lately. We have. This TV version of Carrie has come up like four weeks in a row. It has. Now. It has. So I think we just gotta watch it. We probably <laughs> should watch it. Do I need to change my pick for next week? <laughs> but I mean, well, that is, is that now. is that the one? I always like look back at it because now is that the one that comes up first in her filmography on IMDb? Is it I, is it Carrie? I, I, or think, no? I, would th- I would think it's a Girl Interrupted. Yeah. I think it's well, it May uh, Girl Interrupted, Toolbox Murders, then Carrie. Oh, really? Okay. okay. I mean, as far as yeah, known for. Well, yeah. Carrie seems like the obvious pick. Like, if you're going to make Carrie in this period of time, you pick the girl who played May. Yes. Yeah. That, she's a, yes. It's good casting. That's good casting. Yeah. It's. Obvious casting. Same, yeah, yeah. same year. Way so better like, oh, grab her. than Chloe Grace Moretz casting. Way, it, way better. better. It seems more appropriate, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Okay, so why does her casting in Carrie seem so on the nose? Because at the end of this movie, she's Carrie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. be- because she has like a look that can look really sweet or look really creepy, depending on how it's styled yeah. and dressed, yes. you know? She and can, she plays, I mean, she's very Carrie in this movie. She plays that like innocent, naive, mm-hmm. and then also psycho yeah. at the yeah. same time. Like well, it's, She's got that awkwardness, like she doesn't know how the world works. Yes. Yeah. And she's kind of experiencing it for the first time. Yeah. Especially when it comes to things like um, love, men, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, knocking yeah. on doors. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just and I always basic love when, human functions. Yeah. I just wonder, like, the, the casting directors, you know, when they see people for these movies, because obviously the version of her that we see later in the movie is more likely closer to the actual actress. Right. But, you know, the version of May that we meet at the beginning is like the polar opposite of that. So it's like they have to, you know, kind of see like, okay, how awkward, you know, like, you, how awkward can you be? You know, right. so that that is like mm-hmm. the actor's you know, uh, forte, right? If, if you're a good actor, you can pull that off. Right. Um, okay. So who, who is May? May works at a, what, a vet clinic? Mm-hmm. Veterinary hospital. Veterinary yeah. hospital. Mm-hmm. Um, she, I don't know what her training is. She can do surgery or she's, I think she's a vet tech. Vet. Okay. That makes yeah. sense. Uh, assists in surgery with the, um, with the uh, very bad veterinarian. Oh, okay. Kitty live now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally it's that. the guy from Borat. Yeah. What's yeah. his name? Yeah. Oh, like shit, I don't know. Michael. Uh, yeah, most recently he's the landlord in Cobra Kai. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. Also Snyder, the the talent agent from It's Always Sunny in yes, Philadelphia, yes. the Gang Breaks D episode. Yeah, <laughs> he's a very one. prominent role in that episode. Well, I guess they're trying to say that like May is a, you know, we because we there's a there's a 
uh, scenes that open the movie that basically show her as a little girl, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to set up the psychology of this character. This is going to be a psychological uh, horror movie. They go over this too fast. They do. Way too fast. I I need... stuff with her mom. What I saw did not explain the result we got. Yes, thank you. I need more backstory with this girl because all we know is that she's got a lazy eye, wears an eye patch to school... And kids won't talk to her because of that. And that's all we get. Well, we get she has an overbearing mother or a yeah. very fussy. Mom's very, um, very focused on yes. like how she looks. You know, yeah. you'll be prettier if you look like, you know, cover up your, because, uh, you know, the eye patch that yeah, she wears. Yeah, cover your and patch and then cover the patch with, or use an eye patch and then cover the patch with your hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that. she yeah. gives her a gift. Which is, uh, you know, I think she says because the, the little girl's ostracized on at school, she gives her a gift of this doll that this her mom made, or it was the mm-hmm. first doll that she made. First doll her mom made, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And she says, you know, if you can't find a friend, make one. Here's this doll that I made, and this is setting up, I guess, the 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 inner workings of where this girl's going to go. Right. right. The inner psychology. Up. It's a doll that, like, mom fusses about how she opens the the present you know ripping the paper off and right and yeah. it's do you guys know like these that. people do you know yeah. these oh, people yeah. they very that, meticulously pull it they so don't want to rip the paper yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and yeah. That, which is a good psychotic well, which is a good little thing like to get across that you have an overbearing mother or a very specific mother right like this is a great thing a it's a good thing detail yeah to get across yep. a good detail yeah yeah but don't you worry about the people in real life you know like this now I mean, <laughs> I do. I'm like, if because you've seen movies like May, you know yeah. how their kids turn out. Uh, uh, I've never seen a, never seen him dressed in as much like perfect pink as yeah. this woman was. But she's yeah. very Stepfordy. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Stepfordy. Yeah, yeah. And she can't. She gives May the doll. This mm-hmm. is a doll named Susie. Oh, but you can't play with Susie. Can't touch Susie. You just look. She's at in Susie. like a glass case. Yeah. Yeah, like Annabelle. But mm-hmm. she can't it's, touch yes, it. it's very yeah. Annabelle. Here's but, a doll that you can't play with. You can just look at this doll. I mean, that's like a, it's know. not even a doll. It's your friend, Colin. Yeah. yeah. It's your oh yeah. Friend. Right. Like it's yeah. More extreme than that, even. Yeah. Can't touch your friends. Yeah. And then we. That's that's it though for her childhood. Then yeah, we jump. It. I don't think and, there's necessarily a inciting incident. I think this. Is just all probably just a weird okay, kid off the bat, and then this stuff happens. I saw this kid. I saw this kid be able to carry on a conversation with other people. This adult can't even speak to people or yeah. look them in the eye. What happened to make her so so inept that yeah. she can't even function as an adult? Because this kid was talking to the other kids at school and stuff. Maybe no, just a really. lot of childhood trauma. Because mm-hmm. I remember when that one kid asked her a question, she she didn't like vocally respond she yeah. shook her head and i'm like okay is that a writing thing like a misstep or is that are we setting up that this girl because later on she does that yeah. same thing she yeah. has very delayed responses yeah. and stuff like or that. no yeah. responses but at like all. she yeah. had to go to college at some point to be a vet tech she had to go through th- certain right. things in life to be I, able to I've, get to where she's at right i've known <laughs> but i've known these people who are very intelligent and yeah. do stuff like that they're good at one thing no social Right. Whatsoever. I remember those people from high school. But this movie implies, though, that this is all a result of her upbringing. But we don't, we only get that little glimpse of it. I guess that's the question. Yeah. Are you seeing this as a result of her upbringing, or is there something off about this girl? I say off at the beginning of it. Off at the See, both? And, that's, and that's what or, or, it's yeah, both, both. It yeah both. and that's what uh, we're talking about is like we need more yeah because we can't really determine if it's one or the other if it's both that's we, need, we need a little more to tell us mm-hmm. did something but, else happen or was it just years of being this way personally i don't need that it's such a small moment in the movie i know maybe it should have been bigger for the mm-hmm. rest of it but i don't necessarily need an explanation for it um, Based on the end of the movie, I do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well. I need more. We'll How did get she get that bad? <laughs> that bad? Yeah, just give me just a being... scene of like her mom putting her in like a choky type situation yeah. or something to just underline uh, yeah. how no, like. See, I don't think you need. It was extreme. Uh, like overdone trauma to for someone to grow up and be like this. But this movie says that she is a result of that. Otherwise, we wouldn't even get the scene yeah. with her mom if that was the right, case. Right, because right now we just have a little girl with a lazy eye and an overbearing mother yeah. becomes this psychotic, right. like, recluse. Well, we like, know that she's, uh, okay, so yeah, I, I, you're saying that her uh, antisocial or um, awkward behavior is a yep. result of the thing that happened, but it's like that could have always been there. She seems to have socialized and, like, grabbed onto the wrong 
things like you know when because when she's you know she works at a veterinary clinic and cuts things open all day you know mm-hmm. and so she's dealing with cat guts and dog mm-hmm. guts and all this other stuff and later i think you know she meets uh like the world's biggest dario argento fan outside of uh, <laughs> juno uh, in jeremy sisto yeah. and he's like you know <laughs> yeah i like weird and so she's like oh you know so she has kind of gravitated toward this stuff she right. watches a movie that he made at one point and like sees it as like a sweet uh romantic yeah. but thing. this is this <laughs> is all like the more confusing movie. for me because yeah. we didn't see any of these interests or tendencies in her as a child at all right she was a blonde little child in a yellow dress and her mom was perfect and step pretty and then she grows yeah. up and she's this like goth weird dark haired chick that is into right like blood and guts like what what well, how that, did we get here well that could also be a, a um um, psychology working like if if your parents are like strict on certain things in life, you kind of go the opposite. Right, way. right. But and this I movie doesn't that. explore it, and, and I need to see that. Say any of this. This All is right. some kind of like. I mean, she's disturbed. I yeah. mean, that's, yes. yeah, yeah. Is where, the, but it, it seems like it's uh, you know, she's almost so sheltered from uh, human interaction. It's like she was raised in a cult, is what it feels like. Well, I, and and the other thing, I guess you know, they do say that like. You know, uh, her best friend literally is her uh, doll, right. uh, Susie. And so she, like, talks to Susie and Susie talks to her. We don't actually, like, hear this in the movie. But right. the idea that, you know, she's talking to the doll. And so it's all, like, she has lived in her head for, what, 20 some odd years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And maybe just, you know. And then you, begins I suppose, to start cracking. I guess that's the thing. If you do that and you don't have any kind of social interaction, you, you know, that's right. The, the thing you start to go we you start to go off so i guess what Jesus, this movie's- i should get out more <laughs> since these past two years <laughs> so i guess what this movie's trying to say then is like she took her mom super literally in that moment of like this is your best friend and like mm. literally never interacted with another person for 20 years maybe i feel like maybe if they had gone like one extra just like a two minute or like a minute scene where we see that she's taken out of school and she's homeschooled the rest of her life right i feel like that would have been be- that would have given me more mm-hmm well, there's a scene that maybe because I mean I I kind of felt like it was conveyed in some way that I was satisfied by yeah. it, but it was uh, when she's talking to Susie at the beginning and she says something to the effect of you know how people seem nice until you get to know them, and there's a scene where she sits at the uh, at a park bench and this guy sits down next to her and she turns to look at him, mm-hmm. but she has that lazy eye. And he looks at her and kind of, you know, mm-hmm. gets uh, goes away. And then I'm like, oh, this is this is her experience, like right. for the gotcha. past twenty years. Yeah. Because I guess the movie is starting us off on like the day that she gets contact lenses that fix the eye. Yeah. Right. So this is like her now. She's and then all this social opportunity opens up to her that she hasn't <laughs> had before. Right. We we find her at the moment. Like yeah. she had. This is a big week for her. Yeah. It turns out. Yeah. But this is like the moment she starts going out and going beyond her boundaries. <laughs> like that's it, where we come in. Isn't it wild that people find a lazy eye this off-putting in this movie? There's People right? are disturbed by it. Right? Like It's <laughs> not like, that big of a deal. Like, like, have you ever, uh, have you ever seen The Way Way Back? Yeah. yeah. There's that little kid with the lazy eye in that movie and his mm-hmm. mom's constantly dogging him for yeah. it. <laughs> She's like, you gotta look at me. I can't see if you're looking at me or not. <laughs> it's funny as hell. Dude. It's Alice and Janney. It's funny as hell. But it's like, oh, it's yeah. like so yeah. you know, and like she's all that. It's like they take her glasses off and like put her hair down and suddenly she's attractive. In this movie, it's even like, nope, she puts contacts and gets rid of that lazy right? eye and her whole life changes. It's so like, it's mm-hmm. wow, that yeah. was... <laughs> I don't think that's a thing. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think know. most people would even notice, honestly. Like, I think but, it's pretty easy to get by with a lazy eye. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, it's true, but I mean, I guess it's one of those things for the movie. It's like this is a big self-esteem boost oh, yeah, for or sure. whatever that, that, yes. that it's supposed to be yeah. serving as. And so she goes out and immediately sees a boy that she likes. And this is Jeremy Sisto. But more specifically, she really likes his hands. OK, so this is he has perfect hands. Perfect yeah, hands. this is a little weird. Right, because mm-hmm. I guess that's the thing that maybe a flashback would have uh, helped that she likes different parts of people right. or whatever. Yes, yeah. thank you. I don't understand why she has a fascination with like perfect body parts. Right. She her, her mom establishes that like you always look your best, but she never like is very specific about like like a specific feature Mm -hmm. so her obsession with like certain body parts that's what i'm like i don't understand this i need a little more backstory to her fascination with this okay yeah because this becomes like the main focus yeah yeah Yeah. like what gave her this complex i need to know you you don't just i think the filmmakers could say the eye 
and I think that may be like the, like the eye is what... Since hers is, def- is defective, she appreciates perfect things. Yes. Like, I guess, but I, under- I need I understand more. what you're saying. Yeah. Like, yes. But I also think that's what they're saying, and they're, I'm, yeah. maybe they're hoping that's enough to get you there, yeah. but I understand what you mean. Yeah. I, can, I can see that. For specific, why she likes perfect things yeah. people. Yeah. I can you, see that. We assume eyes. that. You but. easily tweak this movie into she's a doctor a human doctor or a plastic surgeon and is obsessed with like perfection and questing perfection. I like that. It's like, I guess it's kind of like the skin I live in. There's a movie's yeah. been done before, uh, but see, I, you like, know. I like the, the back door version of it. It's not human. It's animals. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not obvious that, you know, you like these things. You're just like, and because and mm-hmm. when the part, she's like, can you like, can you like sew it back on? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I could. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great moment for her. She's like, I could do it. She's it's overly funny. confident. It's a very movies, funny yeah. movie. Yeah. And, and she Angela Bettis gives like a stellar performance yeah. in this. Because all I like a lot of the funny comes from her. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. in her acting in this. Sometimes it's painful. Oh, sometimes it's very sometimes painful. the secondhand embarrassment the is too much to take. Yes. Like when they're standing in the middle of a sidewalk and he's like, hey man, she's like she just, and she stares, just stares at him. At him. Yeah. <laughs> the long pauses she puts between Ooh. everything she does are hard yeah. to get and through. And they like they make them long scenes. Yes. The awkward scenes are long. Yes. It's cringy. So that's it's why just, I like watching. Yeah, cuz I mean it's trying to do like stuff that I suppose I don't know, do you see this line of horror movie? These are the horrors of like <laughs> human mm-hmm. interaction, I suppose, right? Yeah. Which is why I like it when horror movies kind of explore this kind of stuff cuz you know romantic comedies do it or whatever yeah but like horror movies like you know that's when you're actually getting in there you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's it's more jarring in a romantic comedy kind of movie because like i don't want it whereas this it's like i'm watching a horror movie i expect to be horrified it's yeah. horrifying in one way or another yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i am uncomfortable watching yeah this movie. yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, and, it, it, and I agree. In a comedy or a romantic comedy, especially, yeah. the idea that someone would do something really cringy and it would make someone else fall in love with them, it, I that's uh, you're stretching my belief here. And I mean, like, that's, oh, that's like, so cute. But that's oh, what happens dude. in this movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's true. That's well, we were true. trying to figure out, like, during the you know the while we were watching the movie, it's like okay, you know, it's like because like when I'm seeing Sisto mm-hmm. and like he's. I don't know why I'm calling him Sisto. I think they did on the commentary track. I mean, I like it. Uh, But they, uh, like, I get the impression that he has a social life outside of May. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And so that's why it's kind of like, you know, she zeroes in on him as like, you know, I'm going to get to know this guy. Mm -hmm. And... So you're in kinda, a very hard to watch way at yeah. times. Yeah. Holy shit. Very hard. But I guess that's that's what I'm saying. It's like, you know, we're saying like, what does he see in her? You know, like yeah, what's yeah. the because he does kind of pursue something to see like if they're, you know, like, well, she's a cute girl and she's ta- you know, yeah. kind of mm-hmm. awkward. She's into weird stuff. He's into weird. So this is a cautionary tale he for horror horror weird stuff. movie fans mm-hmm. everywhere. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> what he's like, uh you know, it's like, I, I like weird or I like gross or whatever, like uh, gross me out. And then she tells him this story uh, from the, the veterinary so clinic. <laughs> so he good. has to stop eating. And she's like smiling and can't stop smiling while she's telling this. The, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. Story. It's like she gets uh, doesn't get the giggles, but she's the, yeah. the, yeah. the she's joy just, of remembering. Yeah. It. She's just like, there was guts everywhere. Yeah. She's so joyful about telling this horrible story about mm-hmm. a dead dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. disgusting. Yeah, because I guess that's a the, the so she misreads his student movie or whatever, well, right? I would yeah. say definitely. I his music but video. Well, no, right. The thing is, like, I don't think she misreads it. I think she takes it literally. There's that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. she's yeah. doing okay. figuratively. She's right. thinking literally. Yep, yeah. There you go. You're okay. Right. Yeah. It's a movie about cannibalism. These two yep. people like go to a park and they're right. making movie about love, Colin. They can <laughs> yeah. not watch that thing. Yeah. They have a cannibal. Oh right, picnic, figuratively, yeah. literally. I'm right. sorry. Yeah, can't do that. <laughs> yeah, because when things get all hot and heavy between uh, her and and I can't even remember his name in the movie. Adam. I don't, Adam. Adam, thank you. For, that's right. I don't we think know she that. could get his finger off in one bite. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> that was damn funny. That was stretching it a little too much. <laughs> or what'd she say? It was a little yeah. hard to believe or something yeah. like yes. that. That was, was like, a little far-fetched. A little yeah. far-fetched, yeah. yeah. Um, but she ends up uh, biting him on the lip or something. It's just yeah. her, her whole yeah. because method everything is... everything she does is painfully awkward. Yeah. God, yeah. watching her... Who taught you how to kiss? Oh. And she goes back and yells at Susie, who taught you how to kiss? Yeah. She's yelling at her doll. Yeah. yeah, within and, earshot of the guy. Well, yeah, I mean, even before that, she's telling him. And then, but she says Susie taught her how to kiss. What the fuck is this all about? Mm-hmm. 
I what think that was is that this? Scene. Well, that's that scene where she's practicing on her hand. Susie's telling her what to do. I, we just, I, we no don't hear it. Yeah. So that goes painfully wrong. Oh, it's very yeah. awkward to watch yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know. But even I mean, before that, like, when she first, like, is following him around at the the, re- at the oh, cafe. The cafe. That's, that's, oh, yeah. that's, that's, oh, that might be the worst one. <laughs> well, there's that and the, uh, how long have you been standing out here? Two hours? Yeah. You haven't really been standing out here for two hours, are you? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, these are red flags, people but, out there, okay, if you're the, listening to this. We got to talk about the cafe scene, <laughs> yeah. though, because this is an extra level of nuts. It's nuts that he's not weirded out by this, too. But she, she like, walks back and forth in front of his table a few times to get his attention and doesn't work. <laughs> Awkwardly. And he like, she just, looks she looks good, but yeah. she just hurt. Again, not She's comfortable so, in her body. Yeah, she moves so awkwardly. Yes. She, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm just gonna drop this sugar cube right <laughs> here in my coffee. But he falls That's asleep, sexy, right? Yeah. For some reason, he's reading like a magazine he and falls, falls asleep, asleep at his table. Right. Yeah. And she goes over and puts her face in his hand. Yeah. Because he, the way he falls asleep, he's like laying on his arm, and his hand is like up in the air, mm-hmm. like like Hamlet style. <laughs> and he, <laughs> it, it's, it's statuesque. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's like perfect for feeling a face. Yeah. Just looking for Yorick's skull in there. So she puts her hand in it. Yeah. I will be Yorick's skull. Yeah. yeah. So she just like lays her face in his hand. Because he's perfect hands. And he wakes up with a strange w- woman's face in his hand. Yeah. And, and he's, he's fine with it. He's just like, what are you I doing? would want to know more. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, all that's, I'm saying. Uh, yeah. like, See, this is, ladies, this is how you uh, intrigue a guy. I just like, <laughs> ladies, there are easier ways <laughs> to intrigue no, a guy. I, I'll say that. I will, it is no. intriguing. <laughs> there are easier ways. No, I, my, one of my biggest problems with this movie, and it's not because it's fake, it's because it's too true, okay. is because if this girl was chubby, there would not be a movie. He would not be fascinated by her at all fucking all. It's the same thing like uh, with the, the Netflix show You. The, yes. only, the only reason that shows uh, like you can enjoy watching it is because yeah. Penn Badgley looks like a supermodel. Yeah. If, okay. that guy People, looked, if that guy looked like the Unabomber, it would be a different show. <laughs> People will overlook the biggest, re- the biggest red flags if it's a cute person yeah. and that's yeah. fucking... Oh my god, that's it's very so fucking true, annoying. The movie, I was like, well, she's cute. Right. Like, Sean's wouldn't... like, oh, she's cute. I'm like, are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> yeah. You you put you you recast uh Penn Badgley with Paul Dano, you have a very different movie. Very then. different yeah. movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a show that pe- not a lot of people find charming anymore all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he does try to like yeah. extricate himself from this as like things are going, you know, like, okay, I like weird, but not that weird, right? Right. Um, he knows that something's off, but the thing that because like drives you absolutely nuts like about the movie is that he keeps on engaging with her. Like you can tell he doesn't want to, but he's still curious about like something about her. Yeah. He's curious because guys like keeping people on the hook. It felt like he was I don't know if genuinely concerned. Hearing but, anger mm, from this yeah. direction mm, of the podcast. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. You have every right to be angry. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I well, think he's doing the hot crazy scale in his math in his head, oh, right? Yeah, so her crazy's all the way up here, <laughs> but her hotness is yeah, here. Yeah, trying so. to figure out like, yeah. what's too far. Yeah. X, Y, X. See, yeah, which, <laughs> which side of the chart he's on. Yeah. See how I met your mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, a tr- it's a real thing. It's man. a real thing. Yeah. No, it's real. Was the scene, so the infamous cat murder. Which takes place. Uh, uh, sorry, Holly. Does that happen after he kind of breaks up with her? Yes, because after he breaks up with her, she because they had been in the park and saw the blind children playing and like touching things and right. um like sensory stuff, and she's like fascinated by the by this one specific little girl that keeps touching this tree. And so then when he breaks up with her, she's kind of like looking for something to like fill the void that he now is in her heart, whatever. Um, so she like goes to volunteer at the school where the, where the kids are. Is the idea here that the blind kids won't uh, judge her because they can't see her? Is that what, like, okay. her- it, it, I, I didn't know what the whole point of this part of the movie was, honestly. <laughs> I was no. going to ask. Yeah, no, at first I was like, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? Right. But I think yeah. you are correct, Colin. Yeah, because yeah. I was like, is she going for something from one of these blind kids? Do they have some perfect body part she wants? I was like, oh, that'd be weird if she's going yeah. after kids. Well, so I, I the it's, eyes. Like, yeah. it's an eye thing that she's she relates to them. Yeah. 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 And so this, but these she people... Forgets. Can if they friends. can't see with their eyes, they touch with their hands. Mm-hmm. This is, oh, Jesus That's Christ. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Holly had a real big problem with this. Dude, this scene was horrific. <laughs> what happened? Are we there yet? Are we at yeah. that? Well, I mean, she killed her cat. I mean, we got that. She murders the cat, then keeps the cat on ice. So yeah. there's a well, dead cat 
that Holly just couldn't stand in the freezer. I mean, she is cuddling with the dead cat. The cat, yeah. the oh. cat dies and then stays in the movie. Well, because I mean, yeah. you just you just know it's coming. Like she works in this veterinary <laughs> hospital. Anna Ferris comes in, like holding the cat, and I was like, God damn it, does the cat die? Yeah. Because I knew it was gonna die. But there was that great scene that was a nice joke where she brings the cat out, the dead cat out, and she's still talking to it. And she sprays it with Lysol <laughs> for like a long time. That was yeah. hilarious. Sorry, I'm miss petting your fur. <laughs> uh, that's right. The cat may be dead, but still a friend. It's still a yeah, friend. still a friend. Still soft for now. Yeah. Okay. So actually, I misremembered this movie because I thought she brought the cat in to pass around because I remembered there was like an awkward thing that happened with the kids. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember the faces of all the teachers going like, what the uh, fuck? Okay. And so I, I actually, in my mind, I was like, did she bring that cat and like pass it around? Did the blind children rip apart a cat? <laughs> <laughs> what actually happened? Ugh. Why do they freak out so much, the kids? Why are they like, we gotta have what's in this box? <laughs> like, I know. I they kind it's... of, they dismember it. Now, they I, they I, kind I, of lose their mind. I will yeah. say, I think this is her, from her perspective. Yeah. So the overboardness okay. of it is all okay. from what she's, Maybe this is not what they're doing, but this is what she's feeling about it. They are, there is blood and they're kids like are getting injured. Yeah. They are. Oh, there's blood. Yeah. But I think blood. it's overdone in her head, but the thing okay. still did happen. It's how, like, uh, how it feels to her. Right. Yeah. It's why like, the editing and all that stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So she, brings, so she brings May. She brings May in the glass case in is like show. She's Susie. May. So she brings Susie, Susie in, yeah. and uh, it's like show and tell. And then all the kids well, are like at this point because throughout the movie, just to preface throughout the movie, the case is like slowly breaking. Yeah, yes. right. Yeah, yeah. The the more the movie goes, the more she gets angry at Susie. The more the glass case is. Is right, cracking. And right. it's her psychology. Yeah, yeah. it's her psyche. She's just losing cracking. it. Yes. Yeah. 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 She's which is, cracking. Which is nice because it's not even like sometimes they don't even show it. You just hear like you just hear the. Yeah. I like that part. I that you, just, you just hear the glass. You, just you, hear you don't. You don't see right. anything. You just yeah. hear the glass. She cracking. was in the veterinary office at one point. You could hear glass. Yes. Right. cracking. I liked yeah. that. That right. was a nice little detail. Yeah, I like yep. those little touches. And the kids are all they're blind, so they're feeling the box. Yeah, because she's just like she's like, come over here and see what I brought. Does anyone have any guesses? I'm like. They, the they're box, blind. Right? How? They're blind. They're blind. They're blind. <laughs> like, well, and like they don't. She says it's a box and says it's her friend Susie, but doesn't ever to actually tell them what it is. Mm -hmm. So they don't know what yeah, they're even spider reaching for. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You can't. Also, bring something... blind kids are just dumb. Apparently, yeah. no well, offense to blind the, kids. I mean, Jesus, calm you down. You can't bring something to show blind kids and then not take it out of the box. Yeah, you can't do that, yeah, right. right? Because why? What are you showing and, them? But, <laughs> and not even bother to explain what it is on right. top of that. She's not. She's doing everything. Yeah, right. She wrong. basically just says like, in, "It's a box, but inside it is my best friend." Yep. They're like, "Well, take it out." Yeah, yeah. Well, let's yeah. see it's your like, best I friend. Can't, I can't take figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so they, like piranhas, they all rush her like piranhas. Yeah, they <laughs> yeah. just swarm her, and the box drops, and, and glass goes and... everywhere, and the blind kids are in a fever. They're like, "It's <laughs> out!" They're like, they're like, "We gotta get it!" And they're scurrying all over the floor with the glass everywhere. There, and there's so, not a, there's not one reaction shot of a child being hurt. Like no. there's no screaming. There's no. Yeah, ah. they're kind of us. Is there? They, yeah, but they continue to walk across bit. the glass. Like, yeah, there's a little bit. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, they continue they're like to do it. crawling yeah. on their hands and knees on broken glass. It's yeah. horrifying. And then they're and they dismember this doll. Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. Why is any of this happening? I th I like what you're saying, Sean. About it. it's her perspective, so it's probably a lot more extreme than I what actually so. happened. But yeah, what, 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 why are these kids so worked <laughs> but, up? But like, the doll still did get dismembered. <laughs> yeah. And very yeah. Bloody. Well, she does get blood all over her. This, yeah. this is a common like motif in the movie that yes. May at some point gets covered in blood. She gets covered with Sisto's like lip blood. And rubs mm -hmm. it all over her face. And he's yeah. like, what in the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Uh, it happens here. And it must be, it must have actually happened because there's a scene where she goes to the elevator mm -hmm. and Lucky McKee uh, appears mm -hmm. twice, I guess. Is a, but yep. they see uh, the blood on her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did we mention that Angela Bettis, after this movie, directed Lucky McKee in a movie called Roman, oh. which was supposed oh, to really? be like the companion piece to May. Oh, right? that's cool. cool. I like that. That's really cool. But I can't remember a damn thing about oh, it. Oh, shit. Yeah. I, did see it. Yeah. I can't I like now that think idea. of it. Was it black and white? It's called Roman. Okay. He's the lead. She directed it. Yeah, That's really and cool. She, yeah, her, like all that. of her scenes were cut out of Sinister. Because they're on oh, the really? deleted. Oh. Yeah, she was the Ethan uh, Hawke's next door neighbor. Oh, yeah, they damn. would talk over the fence. Huh. Yeah. That's how, There's like two scenes with her. Yeah. 
you know, well, shit. I'd I think want, they like, wanted to just more. isolate him and his family. I guess more, so. so yeah. I mean, that makes but sense. if you stuck yeah. if, uh, Angela Bettis in there, be like, Ooh, yeah. yeah, now well, it's more they, creepy. The whole neighborhood's fucked. Yeah. Yeah. They cast her because you know the whole yeah. Yeah, uh, ain't Angela it cool Bettis, news yeah. Dallas thing. You know, right. <laughs> it's right. like that was written by one of those guys. She should be doing horror conventions if she's not already. I be surprised. She can make good good money. Yeah. But okay, so if Sisto doesn't work out, there's Polly. Yeah, Anna Ferris. Yeah. So what happens there? Anna Faris, she's this. She zeroed in on this character in the early 2000s because this kind of bleeds over into or came from scary movie at that point. She's a very much an airhead, but how else to describe her? I got. It feels like yeah. like in a different universe, Tara Reid would play the same character. You know? <laughs> I feel like yeah. those two were competing for a lot of the same roles. Well, like she's, she's doing a lot of like. She's like a flaky vixen kind yeah. of character. Yeah. You say vixen. I was going to say like vamp. She vamps yes. a lot, yes. right? Yes. Like vamp. Vamp yeah. is good. And so she's like trying to seduce me. Because like her right. first thing is like, you know, why don't you come over to my house and we'll eat melons? And I was like, oh, oh, oh I see what's going on there. Yeah. And then they, they actually, eat melons, they Colin. Eat melons. <laughs> yeah, they do actually eat melons. And they're like, oh, maybe Weird. I misread this, but nope. <laughs> nope. Uh, <laughs> no. You're right on. <laughs> but they just happen to be actual melons. Yeah. So she works at the same. She's like the receptionist. At yes. The, uh, yes. And May zeroes in, I think, like right off the bat. It's like, you have a lovely neck. And we're yeah. like, oh, oh, no, this this is not good for Polly. Mm-hmm. Polly's not going to gonna make it out of this. Mm-hmm. Um, so what what's the what happens with the relation? Because, I mean, they actually do like get together. That may be May's first sexual experience, because no. I think that scene cuts away. But like is so. Polly does seem to actually have some kind of affection for May. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like yeah. genuine human affection for her. But she's also... But she's also got affection for everyone, it seems. Yeah. I think that that's the problem. Or at least that's what May discovers is the problem. Because mm-hmm. again, her whole theory is this, is that people have... Uh, you see the good parts of people, and then you start mm-hmm. seeing the bad parts of people. She's yeah. focused on the parts. And the bad part is that Holly is not... Or Polly Polly's isn't not, faithful, so right. there's that kind of you know she you know but I don't know she has like open relationship kind of yeah thing. It's like, and you're May still thought, my number one May but doll yeah her doll mm-hmm. yeah doll. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so that goes horribly wrong huh? what 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 ends up happening to Polly well she meets a new friend <laughs> with great legs gams great, great gams color gams you got Stems. great gams. Mm-hmm. wheels yeah, yeah. What? whatever yeah he calls it a, she calls it a lot. her dialogue later on when it gets to stuff like that is really like when snappy. she snappy. Yeah. yeah when she switches over she's delightful she's funny mm-hmm. she's even more funny yeah mm-hmm. purposely yeah when she switches over oh yeah because oh. she goes full on she, she's Susie. all that's herself she goes full yeah mm-hmm. no, she gets she goes full on Susie. confident mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a dramatic turn for the character. I think uh comes Remember, yeah. after it's Joker. <laughs> oh, don't do that. No, it is. <laughs> Remember the switch? When, yeah. That's that's it. It's Joker. She's crazy and then all of a sudden she is perfectly self aware and knows what she's doing. Mm-hmm. It's the switch. The Joker switch. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't want to associate Joker with it. But okay. <laughs> no, now we're now I'm like, yeah, you're right. I mean they've been Thank doing you. that yeah. movie for yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's uh, profound. It's, Thank uh, you. Appreciate yeah. it. That's why I hated um, it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, she does. I think um, there's like a self actualization there for your monster, right? Like yep. when she goes a hundred percent monster, she picks up a guy. I think it's you know, like she's so down. The the blind kids that all went wrong. Yeah. Uh, the relationship with the guy. Adam, yeah. that went wrong. The relationship with Polly goes wrong. Yeah. And so she's left with nothing. Yeah. And Susie's and, destroyed. Yeah. And well, Susie's out is what it is. Well, I now, think she fall, She literally falls apart, right? The she does. Tear apart. Yeah. She does. But I think it's just like, it's like simple. It's symbolic. Susie's out, but she kind of is Susie now. That mm-hmm. was the release of the Susie within her. Oh, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. the switch. Yeah. And then she yeah. made Susie's costume. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Work. But my, I, I loved when she's sitting next to the tree and Adam shows up to like see how she's doing and she's sitting there smoking. And she's like, sup, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was such a power move and I it loved really, it, it so really much. <laughs> yeah. That's the beginning hints that something's going on. But like, then when she's at the uh, bus stop or whatever again, 
James Duvall. Is that Robert Duvall's kid? I don't know. He's I was Duvall. wondering that. I yeah. don't know. He's from Independence Day, right? Yeah, he is from Independence Day. Day. Yes. He feels like he was in like a lot of indie movies back yes. in that. Uh, oh, Donnie Darko. Yeah, he was yes. obviously Frank. Yes. Right? Yeah. Um, gone in 60 seconds. Okay. That's not an indie movie. Um, <laughs> but he's like a punk punk rocker or something that shows up. Yeah. Down next so to her. he's got, and she, because he's got a weird look with his hair and everything. And I think that's, I mean, this is kind of the final line for her. And I think what she's thinking with this guy is because of the way he is, because he's a, a based on what normal humanity would look like. He's weird looking, like he's with his hair and leather jacket and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, he's like an eighties crust punk, is what right. He looks but like, I yeah. think when he rejects her, I think that's like that's the final straw for her. I think that's why she's the way she sees him. Like he, I think she feels like they are similar. Right, and her method is like once she like fucks up with somebody she just tries to make a new friend instead of yeah so right. she's like god i just tried to make a new friend i'm already fucking it up like right. yeah, within yeah, like an yeah. hour and hour. right yeah yeah because he finds the cat frozen in the freezer he's mm-hmm. like you're a freak yeah. and that apparently is not what you say you to a psychotic you don't uh, say that. no yeah. <laughs> no and before that though he said do you have any ice for my nips <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I choked on my drink ice cubes i can rub on my nipples yeah, yeah. it's a great comic <laughs> performance i mean you know, because I th- there's like him <laughs> and the guy at the vet who's like, hey, I went on vacation and my dog had four legs and, I came, and it came back. And he had three legs. Yeah. Where's threw, the leg? It's like, I found it in a bush. Yeah. <laughs> I, I throw a later. stick. Nothing I, happens. I mean, I, this is, it's funny stuff. I was not expecting him. I was not expecting him to ask for n- ice for his nipples. Yes, no. I choked on my you drink. You legitimately, <laughs> I legitimately take, choked yeah. on my drink. Uh, you did. I'm, I yeah, did. Just, yeah. Yeah. The art of seduction, according to, to James Duvall. Fuck! Yeah. It's really hot in here. Yeah. Is it okay if I take off my shirt? You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, that goes bad, because uh, once he sees the, uh, the cat body... Uh, she's got to stab him in the face with the, the, the scissors in the <laughs> through the hands into the head. <laughs> yep. And so now that she's committed murder. Yes. Right. And then I think, you know, basically now it's like, OK, I know what I have to do. I've got like this guy because she liked his uh, forearms. Tattoo. Yeah. His mm-hmm. tattoo. He has a Frankenstein up. tattoo. So, yeah. OK, we're playing into you yeah. know, mm-hmm. a little and more direct there. So now it's Halloween night. Which is why we got to put this movie in. I have like for five Halloweens almost brought May. <laughs> it's oh, always yeah. been on the list. <laughs> right. I'm like, this is a Halloween movie. Uh, Halloween night. So she dresses up as Susie, the yep. doll, yep. and goes out to collect her body parts. Mm-hmm. Very cold blooded. But yeah, she yeah. Her, she is like, she, you know, dolls herself up. Mm-hmm. She Good. is <laughs> like, she's very sharp, you know, in her yeah. responses and all that. Even when she's talking on the phone, it's not this awkward wallflower anymore it's yeah. like no. why is she so lucid now why like is it is it just like i've been studying people long enough now i can i think she finally figured out what she needs to do <sighs> yeah and she has the confidence because she knows exactly <laughs> what she wants she's like she said she's been saying this whole movie mm-hmm. parts of people are good mm-hmm. and then you find out the rest and it's mm-hmm. bad she was she's just like, so need, socially inept i just and need the parts well yeah because before she needs people to like look at her and you know like her yes and mm-hmm. in this last she doesn't care if they like her or not she, she has a mission yes i'm on a mission and my mission is to cut parts off of your body <laughs> <laughs> like you do yeah. yeah so she uh visits jeremy sisto mm-hmm. who's yeah. uh entertaining she's got a- her cooler with her she she visits him last Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Because you got to do it like for drama. You got to yeah. build up. To, oh yeah, because he's the she yeah, goes yeah. to Anna Ferris and the other girl. Can't mm-hmm. remember yeah. her name first. Damn. Yeah. Gets her neck and yeah. This legs. was this scene because it's like she's there to seduce her, but she's got her uh, her scalpels. double scalpels. Yeah. What does the doctor call them? Scoopels. 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 Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. he's got her double scoopels. <laughs> and Anna Ferris is so like infatuated with her. She's rubbing knives at her neck. She's like, I know you would never hurt me. As she cuts her throat, yeah, and bleeds her out. It was, this is a good scene. It was brutal. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. It was good. It just felt too like. Uh, I guess that was one of those moments in the movie where I'm like, that doesn't feel like how that would actually go down. Mm. You know, like it, mm-hmm. there would be a lot more uh, freaking out and movement. Right. But she basically just really, you know, because I guess it's you know if they're trying to get it from May's point of view. She just gently slices her throat right. and Anna Ferris just kind of <gasps> and dies, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, I do. But I do like I feel like after because they have an initial interaction where they do where Anna Ferris sees May cutting herself her finger and mm-hmm. she asks, what are you doing? And she's like relaxing. And then she tries it on Anna mm-hmm. Ferris, who 
at, on the offset doesn't like it, but then is like really into it. Yeah. <laughs> but I think they, I mean, they have to do that scene to, that makes me believe that she'd be like, she may cut me, but maybe it won't be yeah. like right. too much. And then. Yeah. Whoosh, yep. Yeah. Oh, she's got to get that neck. She's yeah, putting it in her little cooler that she's carrying around with yeah. her on Halloween. <laughs> what was the, there was a joke there too. Great cold costume. Ones in there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. That was funny. Oh. That was really funny. That's good. And then she goes to visit. Oh, well, no, the. the, the While she's there, she gets gams as well. Yeah. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Anna Ferris's girlfriend comes over. And mm-hmm. so uh, I like that character because that felt like real, the, the snarkiness that she had right. toward yeah. like, the other right. girl that she doesn't she's, like. Yeah. The way she was mocking her. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this, this, is, this feels real. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, this feels a little too real, but yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if you script that or if that's no. just the actress. You know, it's like, yeah. can you script that? I, I don't know. <laughs> just making fun of somebody's uh, yeah. laugh or whatever. Um, then she goes to visit Jeremy Sisto, but he's got a new girlfriend over. Mm-hmm. All right. Nora's yeah. a Hetner. Yeah, who's in this movie? I mean, there's a lot of, like, that's why I like these movies, right? They're all, like, launching pads for people who right? go on mm-hmm. and do stuff. Uh, but the... Um, that's where you're like, okay, Sisto should know that something is, like, way off. Like, right. I guess he doesn't want her to come in the house. Right. Yeah, he and, doesn't. No, he's he's kind of trying to figure out, like, okay, how do I get her to leave? Right. But and then they're quote-unquote drunk at this point. Yeah, but then his new girlfriend shows up, and she's like, oh, you're May? Why don't you come in and have a drink? Because he's been talking about her. There's a scene yeah. that's kind of, I don't know, do we feel sorry for May? It's heartbreaking for May when she goes over to his house and stands there for several hours, and he opens the door <laughs> and is talking with his friend and talking about, like, I, yeah. I finally got like loose of that psycho. Yeah, or you hear whatever. the honest yeah. conversation yeah. between Sisto and a friend. I do feel bad for her because she's she needs help. I yeah, yeah I, she I needs still help. feel bad. Nobody for her. wants yeah. to hear these things about themselves no. ever. Oh. Like it's it's just like when people when people ask you what superpower you want, and the people that say the ability to read minds are full of shit. That's you don't want to know no. what people are thinking all the they time just about you. It through yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Can you That's imagine having right. worse anxiety in your life than yeah. having to hear everybody's thought? all the time like yeah no, no way that, that sounds would, like hell that does sound like hell well i mean i guess it's a question then i mean do you is may um you know sympathetic? i mean is she, yeah is she th- is, is she yes. a monster or is she sympathetic or both, both. Or? she's both both yeah yeah and because i guess that's what these movies kind of do right they, they put you in the perspective of this person and you just you know you're like oh man if only this could happen and change the trajectory of this tragic thing. Right. You want you want so much better for May at this yeah. point. It's like, oh no, I want her to kind of find her person. Well she finds her people. Yeah. Technically. She yeah. finds a person. Well what does she do with them after she severs all these body parts? She takes them home. Yeah, she drags her cooler home. Constructs her person. Yeah. Makes her perfect Frankenstein. She wants to make someone that will see her. Mm-hmm. Is that what was going on? I mean, that's how it ends, yeah. Okay, so this this was the part of the movie where I was like, okay, everything else seems to have been set up, right? Make your own friend. And yeah. so she does. She builds this corpse, you know, yeah. of mm-hmm. it's all stitched together yeah. on her bed or couch or whatever she's got. And then the movie interjects something that I'm like, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't remember the setup for this. Like okay. all of a sudden she's like, oh, cause this is Amy, right? Cause she rearranges the letters of her own name to make mm-hmm. Amy. <laughs> yes. Um, she tries out Yam. She should have gone with Yam. <laughs> <laughs> like, yam, yam was it. Uh, well, Yam would have been good cause it's the mirror of May. Right. Then. So, yam. You know, it should have right. been, been Yam. She could have done Maya as well, but Yam, yam is. Yam. <laughs> when you got a winner like Yam. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, um. So what what came off is not that that she was like you know I'm you know because you know she's having this conversation where like you know I don't even have to talk to you I just I know what you're feeling whenever I feel something you'll feel it mm-hmm. and then she leans down and she realizes that the heart isn't beating and I'm like okay that's right because it's a corpse I know yeah. that your whole view of the world is skewed sure. at that point I thought she was gonna like put yeah. her own heart in that thing. yeah like, that's something. where I thought it was going okay because it's like that love heart right you got right. a thematic tie mm-hmm. in there but no she says you can't see me because she's put like these fake eyes on mm-hmm. on Amy yeah. and so she's like I have to do something to somehow get you know you to see mm-hmm. And I'm like, did, was this set up in the movie that she wants? I mean, I guess by the blind kids, right? Like somehow she wants to be accepted in somebody's field of vision, right? She wants yeah. them to be able to look at her 
and accept her for who she right. is. Right. So this is like it's it's that whole thing. Like you said, we we're meeting her on day one of this week, yes. but like for twenty years she's lived with the the lazy eye. Maybe yeah. they didn't make enough of a deal about that. See, no. go, exactly. Like, well, now here, <laughs> I think that because it is the lazy eye that she does pluck out. Mm -hmm. So I think the whole thing at the end is all about acceptance. Because what has she done with the eye? She's put it on the body of the best parts that she has gathered from the people. Things she likes. And she takes out her eye and puts it on there. As, as if that's her best part. I think so. That's, I think oh, there's an that one does all the logic for me because well, like, I, th I think this is a way to look at it. And I'm not saying I'm right. Everybody's imperfections so heavily when she was picking these body parts. Yeah. But Sweetie yeah, her. but yeah, her lazy she, eye is totally imperfect. cool. Cause she second guessed on a Ferris neck when she saw the mole. On yeah. Her. That's well, all it on took her, on her hand. No, no, no. Yeah, but there was a close up of a mole on her neck. Yeah. 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 It was at the, at the point when she was hooking up with the other girl, when she yeah. showed up to her house there, there, they do a close up of Anna Ferris's neck of her and her. Now, see, like, I think it's just because of the neck. I don't think it's because of the mole. No, no, no. I, mole, saw the mole. Very, no, I saw the yeah. mole, but I still think she's just looking at her nice neck. Because mm -mm. she still goes and gets the neck. No, because that's when she's first seeing the imperfections in her yeah. personality and her physical appearance. It's happening yeah. both. Because like scene. she like her face like cringes when she yeah. sees it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. I will go mm. back and watch yeah. it with you. Because <laughs> that's when the other girl's on the bed and she's all upset about that. Yeah, I the, understand so that, but she, yeah. she still goes after her neck. Why would she take it if that's what I'm saying? That's my problem. Is it but doesn't I don't add think up? Like, okay, I'm, I'll be on the other side. I don't think that's correct. I mean, I guess this is the end of the movie. The so she does. I read it as maybe like this is a moment of desperation. She could go out and get somebody's perfect eye, right? But she takes one of hers out and gives it to Amy. So it is yeah. like kind of this is bond between them or whatever each one of them has an eye and she dies right uh because of the wound that she's inflicted on herself she dies and we see i guess from may's point of view yeah as she's dying yeah the or, or whatever this is at the end because maybe she doesn't die but i think she's dying it felt like she was dying. Yeah, and but I'm it, saying it's possible. Yeah. I'm also yeah. saying it's not. It doesn't yeah. necessarily. This is the to open end. It's the spinning top. Yeah. So at, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's at the spinning this, eyeball. Yeah. yeah. At this point, Amy reaches up and strokes May's face. Yep. Which with with the perfect hands. With the perfect hands. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so she did get everything that she wanted in death. It seems like it. Not she maybe dies not happy. Death. Ah, who said she dies? <laughs> <laughs> it goes to black. It's a Soprano. All movies go to black. <laughs> Not everyone in every movie dies. They wink out of existence once it goes oh, to black. Boy. No, <laughs> characters live on. You shut your core mouth. But like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like she died because I don't know where it would go at this point. Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean she died. And the police we don't get know involved where it goes. And she goes to prison. And, you know, it's well, like, to, <laughs> to succinctly, like for this story, I think, yes, if she died right there, it's kind of perfect in that way. It is perfect. It's Black Swan. <laughs> <laughs> it is Black Swan. Yeah, yeah, Black Swan. Yeah, yeah. I should watch that movie. I've never seen Black Swan. I love it. It's a movie. horror movie. Oh, yeah. It's oh, like, like an upscale right horror movie. Do you, oh, yeah. do you like Vincent Cassell? Yeah. You should definitely okay. watch it. It's, yeah. He's, yeah. He should have. He, was he nominated for no, that? I don't he know. Should, he wasn't. He should have gotten the Oscar for that support. It's my favorite Aronofsky yeah. film. But yeah. Anyway. Okay. Anyway. Watch. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> well, I guess that brings us to the end of May. So the big question that you have on your mind is, should I watch May? Well, we're going to answer that question and more. But first of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. How many people is he made up of? At least 12. Yeah. <laughs> I would think. Are they the perfect and parts, it, though? No, oh, no, no, they're the God, rejects. No, no, no. They're the rejected parts. He's got to switch them out yeah. every now and again. <laughs> so if any of us come up missing appendages, that's right. Mm -hmm. We'll look know for where Igor. they went. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, well, we want to let you know how you can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. On Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. So uh, we should let you know that uh, MF Mad, the Saturday Night Freak Show ah. keeper of the Wall of Fame, 
This is the hallway of fame. I'm going to okay. go. Okay. With yeah, yeah, yeah. Kevin Gage, oh. who had a special credit at the end, if you notice, it was like, and Kevin Gage and Anna Faris on this movie has been in three movies that we've done. I was like, he Which got an Kevin and? He was, he was a cop in the Burbs. He was uh, Billy Joe uncredited in Con Air, the, the deathless Con Air, and he was May's dad in. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. 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 There you They're go. in the flesh. He, yeah, yeah, he got a special, he's, special mention. In the very beginning, he's like singing happy birthday to him. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. So uh, Igor will get that uh, certificate in the mail. Enjoy the hallway. Yes. <laughs> um, about tonight's movie, May, Adam Kaler writes in and says, May is a cautionary tale on the dangers of using contact lenses. Yeah. This movie couldn't <laughs> be more 90s if it had Kevin Smith jump out in a ghost face mask singing tub thumping. <laughs> I really like this movie, and I <laughs> thought like Angela kind of Bettis was amazing, but I feel like there's a slightly better movie here if it was directed by John Waters. It Aww. it veers into some John Waters territory a little yeah. bit at certain points. It's some of the way these characters interact with each other. I'm not sure I could stomach a John Waters version. <laughs> It'd be too gross. No. Yeah. Uh, Jimbo Ice says, May is such a quirky nightmare. It's so close to an awkward rom-com with just enough underlying menace to keep you baited until it makes that turn. I haven't watched it in nearly 20 years, but I always try and watch the freak show film so I can play along with the breakdown. Love and it. This is one I'm delighted to revisit. Yes. You Thank you. Last week, we watched a movie called Flesh for Frankenstein. Michael Whitaker wrote <laughs> it. And said, it's also this movie. I feel like the... <laughs> Monsters shouldn't fall apart that easy, but let's be honest, Frankenstein had some shoddy workmanship. I mean, yeah, it's so it's so early in time to be sewing bodies together. There you go. Well, I mean, he just was sewing the skin. And that's the thing that you get. You yeah, get, it was like these bodies weren't made of like a that's lot true. of parts. If you're just yeah. doing the yeah. skin, what is the length? <laughs> which, like a forearm will come off easily. I'm curious. Yeah, because you got to do like uh, we should experiment. Muscle Ego. veins, individual veins have to be okay. Yeah. Uh, Scraw right. seven nine three says to know death, Otto. You have to fuck life in the gallbladder. <laughs> he says I think that should be on a T-shirt. I'd wear it to church. <laughs> I'm getting if a tattoo on my back. Is that a line in that movie? Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I that's forgot you were line. here. Watch <laughs> this movie immediately. All right, that's all right. the line it's of the, the room movie. of all the seventies. Right, yeah. Watch it. Can't wait. <laughs> Sounds great. It's something. <laughs> Can't uh, recommend it enough. <laughs> the week before uh, we watched a movie called Looper, mm -hmm. uh, Maya Madsen writes in and says, this is one of those movies that gives me excited chills. There's so much good stuff packed into it. Ryan Johnson reminds me of Alan Moore in the way he constructs stories with lots of independent moving pieces that finally all come together in perfect position with a keystone reveal. I'm always excited to see a Ryan Johnson film. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So were we. We, we came out. I think on the plus I side of Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nick Siebel said, well, I just finished watching Looper for the first time. Wow, this movie is so underrated. How yeah, did I not yeah. see this 10 years ago? It's a great episode. Great movie pick. How did this director not get chosen to not get chosen to make the last Terminator film? No kidding. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's a good point. I mean, yeah. how did any director not get chosen? To make well, the last they, they only make wrong choices with the Terminator movies lately. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. <gasps> that's like casting the girl from May to be in a Carrie remake. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna find out what you <laughs> what thought about this movie. Starting with <sighs> Holly, me. What did you think about May? Um, I was not sure how I was feeling about this movie as we were watching it. Um, but by the end of it, I was into it. It's it's something like I like we were saying earlier. This is when they were trying with movies. You know, they were trying things. They were they were experimenting and I I dug it. It was something it was something different. And I always appreciate a movie where like it's all based on the character kind of losing their shit. Like I'm always down for that kind of right? movie. Right. Yeah, the descent into madness. Yeah, the descent into madness. Fun. I'm into it. I like it. And unlike um cuz we saw this very similar situation happen in Joker. Didn't like Joker. In this it worked for me. Probably because it wasn't a Joker movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, I dug it. I, I I enjoyed it. It's it's bizarre. Um, the cringe is hard to watch. It's so <laughs> awkward. Um, someone texted me during it, and they're like, "How's the movie?" And I was like, "Man, it's fucking awkward. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's hard to watch some of this." Growing up like, and man, becoming a human being is awkward, Holly. It is awkward, but. Not that. But awkward. she's not going through <laughs> puberty in this movie. No, like, she's I an adult, love. right? Love. I could, I could talk to people. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's so yeah. The cringe is real, and sometimes I have a hard time with cringe. 
Um, but overall I enjoyed it. I was never bored. I was never lost during this movie. Um, it's, it's a well, it's a well done movie. And I did like the, I, we talked about the, you know, the uh, symbolism and the mirroring of with the doll, yeah. the, the sound of the glass cracking as she's slowly losing it. Like that was really cool. Yeah. I liked that a lot. Um, I kept waiting I was like, is the doll going to come to life? Is Are they going to go there? Oh, God, I was hoping it wouldn't. I, I know, oh, I know, I know. So, I, know. Yeah, so I was much. like, are they going to go there? See, this I, is what the last 15 years has done to us. Yeah. Yes. Any doll yeah. in any I, movie. I like, liked the thing. Like, I'm so, so, so glad it. it wasn't alive. I was oh. so happy that they just like rode that line and they just like stayed with it. Like, no, no, no. It's just like a sim- symbol of of her like psychosis happening. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I dug it. I thought it was really cool. Um, I'm going to recommend it. I thought it was good. This was, this was my first watch. Um, I'm, I, I, I totally missed this movie. I didn't know anything about it. Um, so yeah, I recommend it was a good time. Michaela, what did you think? I, I think that, you know, we are talking about this time in horror and how much like the year after this, that major shift happened. And I think you got to appreciate movies like this for taking the swings that they do at a time when not a lot of studios were taking swings like this yeah. in the horror industry. So, I mean, I respect it in that alone. Um, I like the cast. I like the writing. I like you know, I like that they linger in the awkward because Colin, you brought up a really good point when you said that's like the horrors of like being a human and like yes. everyday human right. life, you know, like it's, it's kind of like sometimes a bunch of minor inconveniences are worse than like one big major thing, right? Like if you, if you fucking stubbed your toe every day, you got up, you'd drive you insane, it's, it's right? It's more exhausting yeah. if you keep getting them yeah. than one big thing. Exactly. So like that's kind of this movie kind of like needles you a bit with all these just awkward, uncomfortable things, but then it'll reel you back in with like the time she's funny or the time she is charming or things do work out for her. And it's really interesting to have her be like a sympathetic character and also a monster at the same time. Uh, it's yeah, it's a really creative and interesting movie and I really enjoyed it. Uh, I had seen it when it first came out, but I have not revisited it since. So I forgot a lot of it. Um, the poster's bad. The DVD art, that's all terrible. It's very dated and doesn't really tell you anything about this movie at all. Scalpel so, scissors? What? <laughs> yeah, but like that could be that like I that's, mean, could, yeah, yeah, that could be, be American. Yeah, yeah. Now, except for that. Yeah. You know, I, like, not many people style hair with the uh, scalpel, but yeah, it means, I mean who knows anymore? They burn hair now. This is true. Right, right. Very true. <laughs> so yeah, it's that could use an update if some some fancy DVD company wants to pick it up and give it some better artwork. I think it the, looks like a know. Godsmack album. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does. Yes, you are that right. Yes, because her, her skin is green. Yeah, yeah. Godsmack. Yeah. Her skin is green, but there's like orange light behind her. Yeah, <laughs> that poster used to freak my nephew out when oh, he yeah? came over. It was hanging on my wall. It was like the the scary lady. You know. I, like, I mean, yeah. it does look like she's staring into your soul. Yeah. It does. Yes. Yeah. There's no lazy eye on this cover. No. So, no. She's um, got her context. Well, right. 2000s era Lionsgate marketing, yes. <laughs> whoever was working over there. But yeah, I would say definitely check it out. It seems like a lot of people missed it. And it seems like if you have seen it and you remember it, you only really remember the ending. So I would definitely say go back and watch it. Colin. I'm really glad that we're doing this episode, I guess, frankly, because I think this is one of those movies. I mean, I unabashedly love this movie. Right. I think it's great. Uh, but I saw it. But it seems like it's one of those movies that time has kind of moved on from because it didn't make a big enough splash. Right. Like it mm-hmm. made a splash. If you were a horror fan in the 2000s, you heard of May. But I don't think anybody else since then. Right. Is talking about May because it like lucky. Nobody brings up Lucky McKee yeah. or Angela Bettis or any of that. They all seem to, have, you know. I mean, I'm sure they're they have a careers, but it didn't. The trajectory didn't bring them more into the forefront. He didn't do something else that was like, you know, oh my god, you know, Ty West's right. career, for instance. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like now he's got X in theaters, you know, and that kind right. of right. Because uh, he was one of those guys, you know, like back in the 2000s that was making stuff, and you know, um, but yeah, it uh, I, I really appreciate these kind of movies that you know do kind of uh, dig into psychological human relationships and make them uh, uncomfortable and uh, you know all. as the basis of horror films. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, uh, this is a uh, the uh, interesting and insightful kind of uh, stuff that the horror genre I think like excels at. You know. I'm I'm bored by the rom rom com version because I know they're gonna and maybe it's just me I like that you know it's like <laughs> it's good gonna, that they can do them both in a bad, horror and rom in a horror movie you know um, but yeah the performances are great I think the direction shows a lot of promise uh, the writing he's a writer director that shows a lot of promise and so I was like what happened I feel like what happened to, to Lucky McKee yeah I feel um, like he hasn't kind of 
gotten yeah, back up didn't, there. Didn't break through. You yeah. Know? Um, Give him a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Why not? Well, I mean, like, well, like you were saying, Ty West with his ex, which is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. I, uh-huh. You know. Yeah. But I've maybe uh, but like McKee just needs something to. He's getting theatrical release. I mean, Ty West has worked hard over his career, yeah. obviously, mm-hmm. you know, through the stuff that he's done. But um, I feel Angela Bettis also is like another person that I'm like, it feels like she should have had a bigger career than yeah. she did. Um, she does excellent work here. This is a showcase performance for an actor. Um, so I love these kind of roles. Um, but yeah, I mean, I can't recommend this movie enough. I think you have to. If you haven't seen May, you got you to gotta check it out. Uh, Sean, what do you think? Yeah, um, I, I think you. Do. I agree. I think you do, especially twenty year anniversary. What better time than now to go back and see May? Um, I really like this movie as well. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen it. Probably when it first came out, I saw it and I haven't gone back to it. Angela Bettis is, I think, amazing in this movie. Um, she, I mean, she literally kills it. Um, she's so good at the awkwardness and the timidness of her character. Um. Again, the, like we all said, the cringe is there, um, but she does such good stuff with the cringe that I like her watching her in the cringe. Um, I think she's a like an extremely talented actress. Anna Ferris is over the top performance in this. While I do enjoy it, it's too much for me in this movie, I think. But I think everything else is it's like it's really great. Um, like we said, sound design in this is great with the cracking. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's really a lot to love in this movie. And. Yeah, 20 years on, if you haven't seen it, if you slightly remember it, whatever, go back and watch it. I think there's a lot that you can get out of this movie. Um, it's, I think it's, dare I say, fun. It's very funny. Um, and yeah, I think it helps. It, do, does, it, it help, does. Because otherwise it'd be like too dark. You know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, probably. <clears throat> um, you know, watch out. There is cat murder. Sorry, Holly, again. I will apologize <gasps> for that. But other than that, uh, I think this is a pretty spectacular movie, and you should definitely watch May. This year, 20 years. Yeah. Give it a watch. So get your smokes and jujubes. Yeah, Yay. smokes and jujubes, baby. Get your, what was it? The Bill, Bill, oh, I forgot the name of the brand of cigarettes. Bilson. Bilson, Bilson. yeah. Get yeah. your Bilson cigarettes That's and your jujubes. They're camels. When Hug they your cat yeah. tight and watch me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was four? Four? Yeah. Four, oh. four, four. Freak show approved. Four. Freak show approved. In May, so yep, freak show approved. You have to watch so, it. So uh, next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by... Holly, what are we going to watch next week? Um, we're going to watch a movie. We're going to visit one that I was supposed to bring oh. a while back and then uh, called an audible at the last minute. We all um, do that. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to watch The Cell. All Ooh, right. Yeah. Okay. I've never seen this. Yeah. I have also never seen yeah. it. Oh, yeah? yeah. Never seen Never the seen it. I, know, I don't even I know, know, know nothing about <laughs> it. Oh, I remember trailers and her in it and all that, but Colin I've never I seen this movie. Other. Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right. Oh. The Cell is next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.